Any rapid increase in flow endangers men working below ground. At the first sign of heavy rain, the men below move quickly to the surface. The pumping stations feel the increase in flow too. Whenever possible, sewers are built so that the waste flows through by gravity. But on long journeys, pumps have to help. The newest techniques are entirely automatic and can cope happily with the heaviest flows, no matter how sudden. And so, far below, the sewage passes safely on to the treatment plants. The first stage of treatment removes rags and any other solid material which could block up the plant later on. There are two ways of doing this. One is to catch the material on screens with mechanically operated rakes. This waste is then swept into a trough and carried by water to a machine which will chop it into small pieces before passing it back into the main flow again. The second method has the sewage passing through machines called comminuters, where revolving drums containing cutters chop up the larger solids without removing them from the flow at all. The next step is to get rid of sand and grit. In these channels, the flow is slowed down. This allows the sand and grit to settle. It's lifted from the bottom of the channels by compressed air and pumped away. Another method has the grit removed by a suction pipe traveling along the bottom of the tanks. The sewage, 500 million gallons a day of it, flows on for further treatment. Next, the sedimentation tanks. Just as mud and silt settle on the bed of a river, so the solid matter remaining in the sewage will settle gradually on the bottom of these tanks. It's called sludge and is removed from under the water mechanically. In an empty tank, you can see how. The long horizontal scraper moves along the base of the tank, pushing the sludge towards hoppers at the end. From these hoppers, the sludge is pumped away for separate treatment. The main flow carries on, obviously cleaner. But if you took a sample at this point, you'd see a liquid still turbid and dirty. Sedimentation has, in fact, removed less than half the impurities. Before the water can be discharged into the river, it must be much clearer and purer. To achieve this, living organisms are employed, minute bacteria, like those found in garden soil. Indeed, before the present century, sewage was purified by soil hence the name sewage farms. The waste was spread over wide tracts of land, turning thousands of acres into unsightly, evil-smelling marsh. Scientific research brought improvements. At the turn of the century, filter beds were introduced. These provided better conditions for the bacteria to thrive, using oxygen from the air and taking in food from the sewage itself. A great step forward, though the beds themselves still spread over large areas. Later research has developed the activated sludge process. When sewage is agitated with air, the growth of the bacteria is encouraged. The more bacteria, the more rapid the purification. In this beaker of activated sludge alone are billions of bacteria. In treatment, the activated sludge is pumped into the sewage in a special mixing channel.
From here, travelling at about a yard a minute, the mixture flows through to other channels. During the journey, the mixture is continually aerated by small bubbles diffused from the bottom of the channels. The bacteria grow in number, feeding on the impurities and purifying the flow. The aeration can be mechanical. The mixture of activated sludge and effluent is thrown into the air to absorb extra oxygen and speed up purification even more. This process is repeated through the entire extent of the aeration channels. Finally, the mixture flows into tanks where the activated sludge is allowed to settle out. Once settled, it's moved underwater to the center of the tanks. An empty tank shows how. The activated sludge is discharged from the bottom of the tanks to be used again. The effluent flows on, clear and clean. Samples are taken automatically every hour, day and night. Nothing is left to chance. Sparkling. Samples are gathered together daily and inspected. Here you can see the difference between crude sewage, settled sewage and the final effluent. All testing of the samples is the responsibility of the laboratories. They perform a wide range of tests on the purity of the final effluent. Here a sample is placed in an incubator at a constant temperature. In a week's time, it will be submitted again for a purity test. The final effluent is now ready.